Hello everyone and welcome to Tomorrow's Tech, brought to you by 3.digital. We aim to increase the visibility of entrepreneurs and business leaders that are driving innovation within Australia. Today we have the founder and CEO of Labrys, Lachlan Feeney, a blockchain development company that's leading the way in blockchain enabled business solutions. Lachlan, it's great to meet you, mate. Yep, great to be here, Scott. Lock, there's widespread debate over the value of blockchain for business. Now, how do you see the relevance within the Australian market for medium to large size enterprises? At Labrys, we consider the impact of blockchain technology on business to be as big as cloud computing or even the internet. As always, these technologies take a little bit of time to get adopted into the mainstream, uh, but blockchain adoption is well underway. If we look back to 2000, we were still debating whether or not the internet was gonna have any impact on the economy. People would laugh off the concept of setting up email addresses uh, because they thought they'd never need one. So. I think it's fairly common when new technologies come out for them to get dismissed. I think it's in our nature uh, to be reluctant to change, Uh, but ultimately, sooner or later, these companies are going to need to adopt blockchain technology uh, or else they're going to risk getting left behind. We already have companies like the Australian Stock Exchange spending hundreds of millions of dollars on their chess upgrade to a blockchain engine. You have Facebook, who's uh, attracted enormous attention for their plans to build a new global currency mm, the on coin, blockchain. Right? Correct. Mm. And so uh, I think we're well past the point of debating whether or not blockchain is a fad. It isn't, uh, and it's here to stay. So Lachlan, what was the initial product that Labrys was developing and did it have any success or was anybody interested in it? Yeah, so what we were originally working on was a debt issuance platform on blockchain and I started that during my studies at QUT. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to reduce the settlement time and interest payment time required for debt instruments like bonds, for example, uh, and reduce that down from, say, two business days to a few seconds. Uh, And we believe we could do this with blockchain technology. So we built a prototype uh, shortly after which I dropped out of university as things started to get fairly serious. As all good entrepreneurs do, you know. (laughs) Yeah, that's so goes the story. So I started, um, we started having a bunch of conversations with different VCs. We raised a bunch of seed capital uh, and started having some really good conversations with large financial institutions like NAB, for example. Uh, And there was definitely a market appetite for this product. But what we found was that Uh, going through these large bureaucratic organizations was going to be slow, Mm. uh, very slow. And uh, we eventually, we worked out that eventually this was going to have an effect on runway. And so uh, this is what initially left the door slightly open towards our pivot to the services sector. So you've pivoted to a services based company. Could you tell me more about that? Well, whilst we were having discussions with companies around our bond platform, we had other large organizations approach us uh, who were very, very interested in our skills. And this was at a time when blockchain development skills uh, were in a major shortage in Australia, and they still are today. And so these companies were coming to us and they were really excited by what we had built, but weren't necessarily interested in our bond platform. Uh, They would tell us that they they didn't know anyone else at the time who could build what we built, uh, but they wanted us to go and work on other projects for them. So 
initially we swatted away a lot of these requests but eventually they became too good to, to turn down. Uh, and so we saw these projects as a new opportunity to gain invaluable insight uh, across a range of sectors and, and pick up uh, some new IP as well. So um, we, we really saw it as a, a, a new opportunity to further the value uh, and expertise of our software development team that was already so highly sought after in the blockchain space. So Locke, what's the end goal then for Labrys? Well, we consider Labrys to already be one of the top development agencies for blockchain in Australia, uh, especially when you consider the caliber of clients that we've worked with. But the market is still relatively small here. So we wanna maintain that position uh, and grow our services business as the global market for blockchain expands. But we understand this isn't an end in itself. So whilst working with these blockchain companies, uh, we've gained an enormous amount of insight. We've worked with literally some of the biggest blockchain companies in the world. Who, who would one be? Uh, well, for example, we're working on a project with NEM at mm. the moment, uh, who are worth almost half a billion dollars. So wow. uh, we're working with some large companies and this has really uh, given us great insight into the space of building blockchain products. We've learnt what works, what doesn't, why projects fail, what are the biggest challenges currently facing the blockchain industry today. And these are all challenges that every blockchain startup needs to solve at some stage. Uh, the difference is we've been already solving these with our clients and we haven't wasted a bunch of runway and resources uh, to solve these problems. Excellent. So uh, we sort of see ourselves in a, a really unique uh, position to take this knowledge and uh, build up a sort of a financial war chest um, from the, the projects that we've been working on, which we can funnel into research and development internally uh, and to fund our own blockchain products, which we hope to sell and license out at a future date. So I think we're in a really good position, better than most, to build some really exciting blockchain products over the next decade. So Lachlan, you're only 21 years of age. You've come so far, it's been an incredible journey. What advice would you give to young aspiring entrepreneurs? My main piece of advice would have to be, don't be afraid to pivot. Companies change, they evolve. If you try and build your company exactly the way you originally envisioned it, you're going to kill the company or you're gonna give up in the process. If you change, uh, what your company does completely from your original vision, that's okay. And chances are that will probably happen. So listen to others, listen to the market and pivot your company to where the opportunities lay. If you just keep moving forward one step at a time, you're gonna get closer to success day by day. And also while you're young, don't be afraid to take a few risks. What do you got to lose? Excellent, Lachlan. Thanks for coming on the show. No, it was great to be here. Well, that's all from us at Tomorrow's Tech. We hope you've enjoyed the show and you've gained some valuable insight into how pivoting can be crucial for success. Follow us on our LinkedIn page, 3.digital, and join us next time on Tomorrow's Tech. Presented by 3.digital.